good morning modern steaders today's day one of our pasture to plate whole hog culinary class yesterday we harvested our pigs and we cut them in half and had the carcasses hanging today we're gonna cut them up and make some delicious beautiful food I can't resist the cut cup fruit. I should be wearing his armor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see how we do here. Yeah, that happens frequently. All right, everything. Beautiful. Have any of you butchered anything since class? Chicken, deer? What preparation did you have to do to it? Not much. And they had cleaned it totally out. Right. We were, we were disappointed we didn't get the organs. Oh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> so this stuff here, don't really just... Yep, head toward that mark. And if you, on that cut, if you don't get all the way to the skin, it's not too big of a deal. We really just want it to be opened up so the night the saw isn't sawing through the meat. Because the saw tears meat. And this is set up pretty well, it's not flexing a lot. One time there was one that was flexing. <laughs> it was flexing a lot and I was holding on to it and the saw jumped off and went right over my finger. Ooh. <laughs> oh. And it wasn't me using the saw, it was someone else that Ooh. felt terrible. <laughs> and I felt terrible because it hurt. <laughs> there you go. It's a tricky cut with this size of saw. Nice. So you don't have you don't have much back and forth space to make a cut and like you get a good push or a draw on the cut. Yep, yep. So there's our, our quarters now. We use our big saw for beef, and sometimes we'll get out to do that, just that one Just that one cut, and then yeah, you put it back. Necessary. That's why we don't bring it along. It doesn't make sense to have someone buy two saws if they're just butchering pigs. Right. Well, that's what I was wondering, if I go to buy a saw, I'm better off buying. That size is nice. That size. That's a 17 and a half. They do sell a 20. A 20 inches, probably the happy medium. For a Because you would have had a couple extra inches there where right. you have a little bit more room. You can cure bacon with the ribs on. Some people do that. And then smoke it with the ribs on. Uh, they do that in the UK uh, more than we do here. I hesitate to do this because it is, it's a little bit tedious. It is more tedious than taking out, taking out the spare ribs at one time. So on the spare ribs. It's like I'm, wrenching the whole thing. Kind of. <laughs> but once you get them started, you can pull them out. Yeah. Like, um, because the meat in that case is attached to the belly, so you don't have to like worry about scraping as much. Um, but if we were just taking off the spare ribs, we would get right underneath them, and we would work and pull up the ribs and come underneath. And then there are rib tips, or these little, uh, I think it's called coastal cartilage nibs, that keep all the ribs connected. And you can cut through it real easy with your knife, kind of like you guys did right there. But these lay together and they go right up underneath the ribs. And so when you're cutting out the spare ribs, it's really easy to cut through those and leave those in the belly, which most of the time you don't want cartilage in your bacon. Um, I'm just I'm saying all that because on the next pig we'll, we'll do it different. Um, but we'll still need to get that out. So if you want to take out um, the ribs with keeping the bacon meat or the rib meat on the bacon, you kind of want to cut and you want to feel the knife with, or feel the bone with your knife and cut on both sides. But you want to cut pretty shallow at first because you don't want to stab your knife into the belly meat. You know, you want to stay right on the edge. You don't want to cut, you don't want to slip off the bone. Yeah, so I'm just cutting pretty shallow to begin with. This one at the edge is a little bit tricky because of how it's sitting here. And I'm just exposing the bone and trying to keep the meat on there okay and then usually like a lot of a lot of butchers that do this will do all of those and then they'll go around just to get underneath them right here 
and if you get it separated right, the bone usually pops out. If you can get right against the back of it, but it's not pulling, so you might have to go a little bit. Yeah, the edge probably wants to tear. Yeah, if you get it started a little bit better than I did, you can kind of see how it pulls out. So you're kind of boning out the whole thing. And then there's a joint right there where it'll pop. And we'll still have to bone out a little bit more of that under there, but there's a rib. So this meat stays on Al's belly. And it'll be cured there, and then it'll be part of his bacon. And, so, nice. and you only want to do this if you're not rib people. Oh. Yep. Does it matter which, do I want to stay in the middle of the chop? In this case, it's just parallel. And it's, it's similar to what Irene is doing because the finished cut, like depending on where your saw is, and it changes through these, because these bones kind of do this, which is a little bit tricky. But you have this space between the rib to make it parallel. So, you know, I can make a cut like this and be between the ribs, and I can also make a cut like that and be between the ribs. Okay. You want to make sure it's parallel to that edge. How you doing, Justin? Come here. <laughs> kind of a pain, isn't it? That's usually why we don't do this. I like to Looks good, Dennis. That'll make the whole thing out. That's okay. We're gonna end up getting some of this other stuff out anyway. Uh, and I can see it, that's why I'm doing that. Yep. Just getting around that. Those up oh, after. Yeah. In other words, it's just like what I was doing with the ribs. But it's life. going this way and you're not dealing with bone, so it's real easy to cut it down. Yeah. That's the that's the tricky part. Turkey and I. So that's a piece of cartilage right there, so I need to make sure I got that. Nice. So you're just going through, trying to stay up against it as much as you can. And trying to stay the cartilage. So you're just going to kind of work your way all the way down. Hmm? And you've done excellent so far. Power of the drops. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Beautiful power chop. Jeez. Um, so like I, pancetta is just an Italian style. Um, and it's, a lot of times it's rolled and tied up so you see this like round bacon. Sure. It's all right. Probably everybody you, has their own version yeah. of different things. Yeah. I mean there's a French version. And this is one where the ribs are kind of a pain to, to cut with a bone saw because uh, they're, they're hollow, they move, and they want to no, grab the saw. Hold it down. So you don't want to put so just glide it. Just it barely try to scratch the ribs. The and then the That's perfect. That's perfect. Keep that rhythm. You'll be there in a few seconds. Then work your handle just a little bit. Yep. You can check and that's it. Marks on the edge of the flat Somewhere in there, you're gonna figure out where you're Nice. And then anytime we use the bone saw, we get out the bone dust scraper, clean up the dust along the ribs.
Yeah, yesterday morning, Amy and I were at his sister-in-law's house in Cleveland. And, and then around lunchtime, we were shooting pigs here in New Hampshire. Modern world, man. Yeah, easy <laughs> place. So you can stop there and we'll start where you're cutting in. For each of you. Well, look at that. You got a little crackling right there on that foot. Hmm. We're going to do uh, one head at a time or a, head, a couple of. It's the end of day one of our pasture to plate whole hog culinary class. I just wanted to share with you all the beautiful meat cuts that we were able to make today. That's the bacon that we cured. We smoked that. We have some ground lard, waffles, nice slab of bacon we'll be curing, some pork tenderloins we'll be having for lunch tomorrow, some blood for blood pancakes, some more bacon. We have a copa, some cut up meat for roulettes to make. We have our call fat, some brains. And then here is some of our pork. Ground sausage. Leaf lard. Some fat for making soap with. That's all pork belly, some ribs some hawks, more ground pork, some chops, ribs. What's in this tote? More ground pork, and a prosciutto. We're gonna be eating good, and tomorrow we're gonna be making some more delicious food with this curing it some more, making some hot dogs. Oh, there's gonna be some great food getting made here tomorrow. Make sure you come back and that's gonna be tomorrow's video. Oh, I'm hungry just thinking about it, but it's been a long, productive day. This is where we're gonna end the video and we'll see you tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.